Hey there! Today I want to talk about something that haunts nearly every machine learning practitioner, the curse of dimensionality. Our world is filled with objects of different dimensions, from points, to lines, to squares, to cubes. But what happens when you go beyond what we can visualize in higher dimensions? It sounds dramatic, but trust me, this curse has very real consequences for our algorithms. So what exactly is this curse? As we progress from lower dimensions to higher ones, our intuition starts to fail us. Think about it this way. When you have nine points on a one-dimensional line, they cover the space quite well. Those same nine points, arranged in a two-dimensional square, leaves noticeable gaps. And in three dimensions, the space becomes mostly empty with just nine points. And, as dimensions increase further, this sparsity becomes even more severe, causing traditional algorithms to struggle with insufficient data coverage. Let's start with a simple example to build intuition. Imagine we have a square with the side length of 1. What's the distance from the center to any corner? Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can obtain that it's equal to the square root of 1 to the power of 2 plus 1 to the power of 2, which is equal to the square root of 2, which is approximately equal to 1.41. Now let's move to a cube. The distance from the center to any corner becomes the square root of 1 to the power of 2 plus 1 to the power of 2 plus 1 to the power of 2, which is equal to the square root of 3, which is equal to approximately 1.73. If we keep going to higher dimension, in a 10-dimensional hypercube, this distance becomes the square root of 10, which is approximately equal to 3.12. And in 100 dimensions, that's the square root of 100, which is equal to 10. And how about an even more extreme case of 1000 dimensions? That's the square root of 1000, which is approximately equal to 31.62. This is quite counterintuitive if you think about it. As dimensions increase, nearly all points become far away from the center. In fact, in higher dimensions, almost all the volume of a hypersphere is concentrated in a thin shell near its surface. This means that distance measures, which are fundamental to so many algorithms, become less meaningful. For instance, let's consider the unit hypercube with a side length of 1, centered at the origin. If we inscribe a hypersphere inside it, touching each face, then what fraction of the hypercube's volume does this sphere take up? In 2D, if you calculate this, this ratio is pi over 4, which is approximately equal to 0.785, or about 79 of the square's area. In 3D, this is equal to 4 pi divided by 3 divided by 8, which is equal to approximately 0.524, or about 52% of the cube's volume. And if you calculate it further, in 5D, you obtain that it's only about 16.45%, and in 10D, it's approximately equal to 0.25%. This means that in higher dimension, the vast majority of the volume is in the corners of the hypercube not near the center. And again, our intuition from 2D and 3D completely fails us in a higher dimension. Now, why does this matter for machine learning? Well, let's say we are building a classification model. To train it properly, we need our data to cover the input space reasonably well. In low dimensions, this is feasible, but as the dimensions increase, the amount of data needed to maintain the same coverage grows exponentially. For instance, if we want to sample a one-dimensional space with five evenly spaced points, we need five samples. For a two-dimensional space with the same density, we need 5 to the power of 2, which is equal to 25 samples. For a three-dimensional space, that's 5 to the power of 3, which is equal to 125 samples. And basically, this is the essence of the curse of dimensionality, exponential growth in data requirements as dimensions increase. Now, let's visualize another aspect of it. Consider placing points 
uniformly at a random in a high dimensional space. As dimensions increase, the probability of two random points being nearly orthogonal approaches 1. In other words, random vectors in high dimensions tend to be almost perpendicular to each other. And, if we were to prove this mathematically, we would obtain that the expected value of the cosine similarity between two random vector units is equal to 0, with a variance that decreases proportionally to 1 divided by d, where d is the number of dimensions. This explains why the distribution of angles becomes increasingly concentrated around 90 degrees as dimensionality increases, making random vectors in high dimensional spaces almost always nearly orthogonal to each other, a counterintuitive but mathematically proven consequence of high dimensional geometry. So how do we deal with this curse? Well, there are several approaches. First, dimensionality reduction techniques like PCA or UMAP can help by projecting data onto lower dimensional spaces while preserving important relationships. Second, feature selection methods help identify which dimensions are most relevant to our task, allowing us to discard the rest. Third, algorithms specifically designed for high dimensional spaces, like locality sensitive hashing, can provide efficient approximate solutions to problems like nearest neighbor search. Fourth, regularization techniques help prevent overfitting, which becomes especially problematic in high dimensions due to the curse. And finally, obtaining more data always helps because it fills the empty space that the higher dimensions create, although this approach has practical limits. Finally, it's worth noting that the curse of dimensionality isn't always a problem. In some cases, like in deep learning, high dimensionality can actually be beneficial. This is sometimes called the blessing of dimensionality. The idea is that in lower dimensions, data that isn't linearly separable, in higher dimensions, it might become separable. This is one reason why some neural networks map inputs to a very high dimensional space before classification. And that's it for this video. I hope you now understand the curse of dimensionality better, what it is, why it matters, and how it affects our machine learning work. Please hit the like button if you found this explanation helpful, share your thoughts in the comments below, and subscribe for more content like this. Also, I would like to give a big thanks to everyone supporting this channel, including my Patreons and YouTube members. Consider joining them if you'd like to help me create more content. Your support makes these videos possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye bye!